Good afternoon. The great thing about being the last speaker is that people's gazes turn hostile. So I'll keep this as short as possible. Very quickly, just to present As Hotel, we're an association for hotels and self-catering for Santa Cruz of Tenerife. We're set up in 1977, and we have 20, 240 establishments that are covering 95,000 beds or members. We provide legal services and training services, but since 2000, we set up the environment and innovation sector for Ash Hotel. So with this, we've tried to this is an industry that contributes 31% of the local GDP, so we're showing our commitment to the environment and to innovation here in the area. Some of the projects that we've rolled out in 1998, the first one was Gear Practica for improving environmental management in hotels that had quite an impact in both regionally and nationally. Another more recent project is the FE Play Green, which is an app that we've been testing in hotels, and it invites hotel guests to establish an efficiency policy with regard to energy supply in the hotels with prizes that they can win. There was other actions that we've done with, against climate change. We organized a conference in Tenerife in 2008. This is on our website, and I'll call on you to look at it because the conclusions are very interesting. We brought some leading speakers to talk about what the hotel sector could do to provide support here. Of course, we've also been working in the establishment, member establishments for environmental management systems and also for tourist services that are committed to climate change. And more recently, this morning, we just had a, a meeting with a member in Tenerife with sustainable development and electric vehicles. This is just what I've explained to you. So maybe if we're talking about waste, well, this brings us up to 2004, where we took part in the first composting course for uh, waste from hotels. In 2003, the association really took a stance against incineration of the waste, which was the policy that the Island Council had chosen. But in 2008, we took part with one of our members, with Parque Santiano in experience. And it's a shame we don't have time to show you the video, but this is an interesting issue. We've also got involved with in the regional waste management plan, and we're part of the steering committee. We also work very closely with Echo Video and with the Puerto de la Cruz Town Council in their waste management plans, we're also working with other with other local councils, and finally, we have a European project with a Horizon 2020 that's just been launched this week, along with 11 European countries. It started. It's called Urban Waste, which runs from 2016 to 2019. Uh, just a few quick questions, just to share some thoughts with you, and I'll see if I can answer them quickly too. So, what's happening in the tourist areas? Are they applying the principles of the three R's? The, there's a different behavior that we see in different tourist resorts. Some hotels that work with the management systems and use best practices and have a good management policy. There are others, however, that show some deficits. But despite all of this, the percentage of recovery in the tourist area is very low. It's only about 6% of recyclable material. And this shows the room for maneuver that is. So that's the first complaint against ourselves. What we really miss are will be political action in the two first two hours, reduce, reduction and reuse, because we we tend to focus on um, recycling, but we need to put the focus also on reuse and reduction. According to the observatory, the Tenerife Waste Observatory, between 30 and 40 percent of the rest, the reject fraction could be used for compost if, if it was more stringently sorted. Bear in mind, on the one hand, you've got the, the, the reject from 
organic matter, which is from the kitchen, and then there's all the others. So how much does a hotel pay for collection, and is this being run properly? From our experience, the recovery rate from the hotels is linear. There's no distinction. You pay per bed, and it doesn't matter whether the bed is occupied or not, and it doesn't matter whether you sort the rubbish or not. So this disincentivizes hotels to behave more efficiently. This is a system that is, in our opinion, and is not a very good. There's a recent ruling against a tourist local council because they studied the cost of what they were charged. And this opened up the possibility that if the service is compulsory, then the hotel establishments could sit down and talk about the rate that they pay with the local council. This gave us the opportunity to roll out some pilot schemes, but nothing has been done here to date. But with the tourist chair in the University of La Laguna, we want to open up this dialogue with the local um, authorities. So how much does a tourist produce? In our, from the waste observatory, we're talking about 1.8 kilos per day in tourists compared with 1.6 by a resident. So they're very, very similar figures. Compared with this, we find that recovery rates that are about 64 euros per bed in a, muni in a tourist municipal compared with a house that would pay 64 euros irrespective of how big the house is and how many people live there. It's 34 in Santa Cruz for, for, uh, per bed for hotels. A very brief look at this graph which shows the monthly average of household waste generated by people in uh, the four tourist municipalities on the island. If we compare these with other municipalities, there's no seasonality, no accentuated, because we have a year-long tourist season. So we're talking about we could generate greater economies of scale than it is, and also associated with higher efficiency levels. Another thought that I'd like to share with you is, is whether we can consider these establishments as local production centers in Tenerife with hotels of about 218 hotels and over 400 self-catering units which are located and concentrated in specific areas. And moreover, many of these establishments have to have an area to collect their organic matter compared with other municipalities. And what I'm saying here is that we're, this is an industry that has the capacity to be far more efficient, but with more flexible regulation, as I was saying before, we are totally convinced that we, first of all, we could reduce the, the amount of waste that's collected. On the other hand, from the data, we can see that the recovery and recycling rates would be far higher. The higher occupancy, do you get more rubbish? So if we have higher occupancy, can't we reduce the cost of the collection? But this is a very heated debate. What we want to do is to take the discussion to what the value of the service is. And that's why we went to sit down with the local councils to present our point of view and some of our initiatives that we have to consider uh, paying by how much you produce. But these are things that we can do. We can measure this with the technology that we have. And also there will be penalty systems for people who don't meet the requisites. Uh, so I'll go straight to the conclusions now. Obviously, we have tourist areas that the uh, local councils charge money as if there was a big cities, but the, the collection systems are not the right size. Each hotel bed generates 1.8 kilos of rubbish per day uh, against the residents of 1.6 kilos a day, so there's no effective scale. They pay 11 cents a kilo, a tourist, whereas a resident pays 0.05 cents a kilo. So. We're talking about a subsidy of the, the residential sector compared with the tourist sector. 
with the information that we have, the hotel system in Tenerife could cover the cost of collection for a system like La Laguna with 150,000 inhabitants. That's just from the hotels with what they're paying for rubbish collections. We do not get a management system that is suitable to the price we're playing. And moreover, there's no distinction between hotels that sort their rubbish properly and those that don't. Another complaint is that the recovery ratio of the light packaging fraction and electrical ambulance is almost 30% lower than the residential race. This is something we need to look at if you consider the potential that we have with a concentration that's far more locate, uh, localized. But there are, are examples that lead to, that cause us a bit of optimism because we're an ally of the circular economy. I've got a 30 second video to show you. In Parque Santiago, where they've set up a system that strikes us as interesting. They've adapted a complex of apartments in different areas of two specific municipalities of the south of Tenerife. They have guard green areas, gardens. We started this in 2002, so we thought, well, why don't we um, compost all the pruning waste they get from the gardens? So we take this to a piece of land that's not being used and they can harness that and recover energy where they can grow organic fruit and vegetables and this is taken to the hotels and offered to our customers so what was a problem has now become an opportunity which has improved their position as a company and given them a competitive edge against other with tour operators with intelligent tourist resorts are the ones that will harness technology not just to improve their economic management but also to change people's behavior five million tourists come to Tenerife a year and 13 million come to the Canary Islands so we have the opportunity to raise awareness first of all amongst ourselves and then our visitors or maybe we can learn from the tourists that come to visit us and the objective here is to fight against the common enemy which is the reject fraction the, the lesser it is the smaller it is the worse I won't uh, I'll put the video on then if we've got time This is a company that's committed to the environment. It's managed to tie a sector, the tourist sector, with the rural world, with farming and livestock rearing. Parque Santiago is a company that manages tourist accommodation in the south of Tenerife, in Playa de las Americas. Parque Santiago is directly involved in the shared effort of make, striking a balance between economic development and protecting our own island environment. For this reason, we have rolled out environmental improvements in our service, especially in the efficiency of consuming and uh, management of waste. We have a 14,001 standard and certifies in EMBAS. A few kilometers away from there, Parte San Guiago has a, um, an organic farm this farm has been created to be run as a small holding and therefore we can offer our guests either as a welcome gift or something they can buy in the supermarkets. They, all our organic fruit and vegetable is up for sales which is produced by composting the organic waste generated by our customers thus closing the recycling circle. We set up clean points around the area where customers can correctly sort each of piece of their, res uh, their waste which will be taken away to be reused. This way we avoid wasting our natural resources. In 2005, 273 containers were generated, around 166 tons of pruning remains and vegetable organic waste was used instead of being dumped in the landfill. After 2003 we reduced the the, uh, we didn't send any pruning waste to the land tip, to the landfill. We used it for composting, so the waste became a resource. Previously, this area was deserted, it was neglected. 
because of intensive growing. In this case, it was tomatoes that were grown here for a long time. The use of the continual use of uh, fertilizers as reckless soil, thanks to composting, we've managed to recover the soil. Composting is an aerobic biological process that consists in transforming uh, pruning remains. They can be woody parts or palms, along with other plants, uh, residue from plants. What we can do is to organize a series of process along with the micro, um, microbes to transform this into fertilizer. The fertilizer has to, uh, the process has to be kept within the parameters. We have to check the, the humidity and the temperature. We can list the major advantages of this. We use less water. You can reduce the irrigation system, the water that you use by approximately 30% using these fertilize. By a we can spray this onto the leaves or onto the plants, and we don't use the chemical substances and the, the nutritional humus that we're going to do this plants. From a biological point of view, the food has a high nutritional content that we're contributing. We're, we're growing food here that we can give to the tourists, so you could call this health tourism, if you like.